Hello, hope you're doing well, and welcome to our Pilates class, our Pilates class. My name is Brian Murphy, and we're going to go through a series of exercises that will strengthen you, stretch you, and make you feel good. Now, I uh, have a small ball with me. Let's say you don't have one. You can always put a pillow or something, because we might do some exercises where we put it underneath your safe room. The other thing is, I have these weights. Now, these weights are small, but it's okay. I'm using something that are nothing. There's other things you can use in your house, like uh, cans of food, that type of thing. Either way, we are going to go through this. Now, if, you, uh, if you've never done Pilates before, um, sometimes you might feel your neck, or you might feel your hip flexors. Please modify this first time. And as you do more of these type of exercises, you'll find that uh, the more you use your core, the better, okay? And you're gonna to wanna to power through your neck. You're gonna to wanna to power through your legs. What happens when you do that, let me get a little closer to you, is you're gonna feel your lower back. Okay, it's gonna hurt. And you don't want that. And you actually, the is supposed to be actually good for your back. Okay, with well, that being said, you're gonna get down your stomach, and let's go ahead and start. Nice and easy cobras here. Hands are flat on the floor, and we go up. Two, three, four, and lower down. Two, three. Lift. Lift the upper body up. Three, four, and lower down. Two, three, four. Lift it up. Two, three, four, and lower down. Two, Three. Again, lift it up. Two, three, four, and down. So it's kind of good. It's a good way to open up that lower back. Be gentle. Three more. Lift. Two, three, four, and down. Two, three, more. Two more. Lift it up. Two. Three, four, and down. Two, three, four, and up. Last time. Three, four, and lower down. Two, three, and. You're going to go up to a cat stretch position. Then you're going to let it go. Two, three, lift your back up. Two, Three, four, let it go. Two, three, four, and lift those abdominals up. Two, three, four, one more time. Two, three, four, and lift it up. Two, three, four, get the child's pose. Two, one. Four and hold for three, two, one. We lift your back up. Two, three. Go. Let your hips go down first. Lift your chest up, and then you're gonna lower down slowly. In three, two, forehead and hands. One. So what we're gonna do now is gonna lift the upper body up. Forehead on the hands. Keep your legs on the floor. So you're gonna go up one, two, three, lower it down. Two, three. Lift the upper body up. Keep your forehead on the hands. Cause you're gonna wanna lift your head up. And then lower down, the pure strengthening back exercise. And we go up. Two, three, four, and down. Two, three, two more. Lift. Two, three, four, and down. Two, three, and go up. Two, three, feel that back and lower down. Three, four, one more time. Lift it up. Two, now lift your legs off the floor. And lower the upper body down, legs all the way, release. Gonna repeat that. 
In, you lift your back up. Breathe in. Keep your forehead on the um, hands there. Lift those legs off the floor. And then lower down. Two, three. One more time. And we go up into the position. Lift your legs off the floor. Forehead is released on the hands. Two, one, lower down all the way. Go into child's pose position and let's stretch it out. And hold for five, four, three, two, one. And you can go up and over, go all the way down. And now we go into our swimming, same extension. Those muscles should be a little bit warmer. So you lift your back up. Fingertips are reaching, stretch those legs off the floor. Lengthen your neck. And we swim one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, two, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Last set of ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and release. Excellent. Let's continue on to the back now. Okay, so you're going to get on your back here. Feet are flat on the floor. We go right into the bridges. Hands are flat, feet are flat. And we lift your hips up to the ceiling. One, two, three, four. Hold. And lower down slowly. Three, two, one. And lift it up. Two, three, four. Hold. And down. One vertebrae at a time. Two, one. Two more. Lift it up. Two, three, four. Hold. And down slowly. In three, two, one. Last time. You're going to lift it up. Two, three. Hold that position there. Hold that bridge. For ten, nine, eight, seven, six, and five, four, three, two, one. Release it down slowly, one vertebrae at a time. In three, two, one. Grab your ball and or pillow. If you're laying on a mat, you can also use your mat. So I'm actually going to use the mat. So a little bit different here. You're going to go to a flexion position. You're going to grab the corners of your mat. What you're going to do is you're going to bring your arms up. You're going to actually lift the upper body up into a flexion position. And then you're going to lower down slowly and release. So we're going to do that four or five times. And we go up. So as you go up, just relax your head. Use your abs and lift it up. Once you get to your upper flexion position, pull that angle in. Again, relax your head. No tension in your neck. And release it. Peel it down in three, two, one. Three more. And use your abdominal still. Don't tense your neck. You can use your upper body. Go up and hold. Feel that neck it's being supported there. That's it. And lower down all the way. In three. You're probably wondering what this benefits. Well, a couple things as we do two more. And lift it up. When we go to flexion, we tend to overwork our neck. That's just the bottom line, right? So there's many ways to support the neck. Typically we have the hands behind the base of your neck, you, you, know, you can use a ball, you can use a pillow, this just happened to use the mat. And the other thing is, if you notice, 
that it's just a domino workout. You're not using your, you're using your body, yeah, 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 but you're not using your neck. And you know, my legs are just there, go up and again. I'm not using my legs, nothing, just pure abs. So let's use your, let's use your legs now. So bend your knees into the body. Extend the leg out, one leg out, one leg in. Make sure your lower back stays connected to the floor. Don't hyperextend it. We go. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, five. Feel that support. Keep the upper body up. You're going to feel your abs pretty quick here if you do it right. Flex your feet. One, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, and a five, five, go six. Six, go seven, seven, go eight, eight, go nine, nine, go ten, and relax it down all the way. Pure core. I didn't feel my hip flexors, I didn't feel my neck. And the question you have to ask yourself if you're, if you're, you know, as you're working out, why do you feel your neck? Why should you feel your neck, right, when you work out? All right, get on your side there. So again, Everything we, we want to do, legs off the floor, both legs off the floor, and I'll explain as we move the legs up and down. Everything we do, we get to think about, am I really being efficient in my workout? So let's bottom leg to the top. One, up. So if you're doing even this exercise, let's say you're going up and down with that leg, and your hands on your head, you're just kind of hanging out. Why would you want to do that when you can put your head down and support that neck, right? Five more times, five and go four, and go three, and go two, because when you put your head down, it has to zone in on the obliques, top leg, one, down, go two, down, go three, and go four, feel the legs are stretched out, and six, and go seven, and go eight, and go nine, and go ten, flex the feet, Bottom leg to the top, one, up, two, and three, and four, and I feel those abs working, I feel my obliques working, all on the, on the side, there. three more, two more, one more, top leg, up, and down, a two, and down, and three, and down, and four, and down, and five. And go six, and go seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. Relax. Yes, so all that lateral series is important, right? Feels so good. It's all about the obliques. Got all those muscles on the side of your hips there. Stretch it out nice and long. Relax your neck, head on your arm. Let's say you're hyperextending still. You can always grab your ball or your pillow and put your head on the pillow of the ball. It's very comfortable. <laughs> Bottom leg to the top. And one. And go to, again, if you don't know me, if you're just watching me for the first time, or if you do know me, I will reiterate this over and over again a lot of times. Three more times there. Two is that when we work out, we need to be efficient. And as you're going through this process, you're at home, you're working out different videos, you're gonna, if you feel the neck, you have to ask why. You know, you're going, well, I did that workout the other day. Well, why did you hurt your neck? Is it because you're using your shoulders too much? You know, that's very common. Two more. Because right now we can go, oh my God, you so why? You don't need to. Strengthen those muscles. That's right. Flex the feet. Bottom leg. One. Take this tension that we put up in here. Can you move those legs? I'll just keep talking. Shoulders up here and bring it down. Breathe. And then feel like your whole, all the energy goes into your core. Three more times. Three. Just the bottom leg. Two. One. Top leg. One. Two. It's important. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, and ten, and rest. Excellent. 
Let's go ahead and continue on to the stomach here. Arms are behind you. These are these. This particular exercise I do like. It's a simple exercise, but it's a good way to make sure you're not shrugging. And then we really work those back muscles, and then really the whole body is working when you do this. So you're gonna lift your upper body up. It's like an ab prep, but an extension. You're gonna lift your legs off the floor. So really, great, really reach the fingertips. The other thing is, while we're here, do not hyperextend and look up. I know you're going to want to. Keep that neck long and release. And I want you to ask yourself that, ask yourself the question, why is that important? So while we do this, if you're up in that extension, why is it important to keep your neck long? or the alignment of the neck and then release down. So you, you, those questions you need to ask always lift it up. Now we're going to swim maintaining the alignment and you know it's actually harder said than done especially if we always are used to looking up. So to be in this position and not to look up is, you know, again, you're fighting against what you're used to doing. But then when you do keep it long and you do have your shoulders down and you feel a sense of ah, why not always go there? So continue to say that to yourself. Why not be feel good when I work out? No matter how intense, yes, I am still doing my legs, no matter how intense the workout is. And believe me, being a ballet dancer, I've done a lot of things that could easily be construed as intense, but I try not to, always, to use my neck when I moved. And Pilates, or any other intense, while well, removing your legs, exercise is the same. Relax. Child's pose. Either you're a professional athlete or somebody who strives to be strong. Your goal is to be efficient when you work out because you are spending your time doing it. Ball. I have a ball. If you have a pillow or anything that supports the sacrum, please grab it. It's just a slight elevation off the floor. So, if for some, if you don't know where your sacrum is, number one, it's not your lower back, which is right where your where your uh, curvature is. When you lay on whatever thing you're laying on, and you feel like this anterior tilt, that's too high on the back. You want to put it low where your sacrum is, or tailbone. When you take your legs off, you wrap your, you should feel like whatever you're uh, laying on. It's almost going to pop out and or if it's a pillow, it's kind of far down the back. All right, legs on the air, hands are flat. We're going to go right into our double leg lowers. Again, I, okay, so why, you're going to ask, why do I like the ball on the pillow? Well, let's do the exercise and I'll explain. So double leg lowers, down, two, three, four. That's the tempo, not too fast especially on the way up. I know you're going to want to go fast, but you just have to slow it down and then lift it up. So there's a couple questions that probably pop it in your mind and maybe I can answer them for you. But actually, uh, if you're watching this and you're like, you have the question, why don't you type in the question on Facebook and I will reply. Okay, so if there's any questions at all, and even if you're not doing the exercise, and you're just watching and you're listening, just get to your computer and type in, why blah, 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 okay? Just do that. That way, I know what kind of questions you're asking, and then uh, I can answer them. But, a couple of questions I typically get, and we are still moving. I'm just not just talking and staying still. We can still move while I talk. 
And you're probably wondering how many more we're going to do. Don't ask that question. <laughs> because I really don't know. <laughs> why count? You know, why not just feel it? So, at any rate, we'll do about five more. Is that the thing that? Okay. So, uh, yes. Why the ball and the sacrum? If you take note, it really supports the lower back. It just supports it. So again, it takes away the, the hip flexors doing the work. Now, does it mean that I'm going to feel the hip flexors here? It just means that when your, your ball is away from the lower back, three more, you're, we're going to try it, and you're going to notice the difference. And I want you to be honest in the difference that it feels like. Then you have to ask the question, why have I been doing double leg lowers without the support of my lower back all these years? And you're probably saying, you can answer that in many different ways, but the, the, the better question to answer is, I'm not going to do that anymore. I want my lower back to be supported. If you also take note, the neck doesn't work so hard. Again, the neck and the hip flexors. Those two things power through, and then the abs don't really work as hard. Okay, one more time. And down, and then lift the legs back up. And bend your knees and release. Stretch your legs out. All oh, that should have felt good. In the beginning, it eh, probably feels like, oh, uh, this is kind of foreign to me. It usually takes about three to four classes or times to do this to understand that you want to work those lower downs. Now, we challenge yourself by grabbing the weights. Now, if you don't have weights, you can do the action of the arm still without weights. Because it takes some balance. There's also a balance component to this. So if you're not, if you don't have weights and you're, you're you don't want to fudge around for them, that's fine. So we're gonna do, we are going to do bicep curls while we do double leg lowers. So your arms will bend as your legs go down. And we go one, two. If you just join, I do I did put this on my uh, YouTube channel. So when this is over. It'll post right on it more than likely pretty quick. So you can start from the beginning if you're one if you're just joining. Or if you want to watch later, you can do that also, whatever you want to do there. So these are these are exercises geared towards pure strengthening your abdominals and the coordination of this. And again, I keep saying this, and I love talking while we move because at least you're exercising while you hear everything. Um, we have about five more of these is that most of our exercises that we do are geared towards uh, the core. <laughs> and you're probably wondering, oh, it's kind of funny. Most Pilates is supposed to be that way. Well, it is, but there are a lot of exercises, in my opinion, that are done in the, in the genre of Pilates. And people can argue this, and I would love to have a discussion about this with somebody out there, that are not that good, let's be honest. Uh, the hundreds, no. You never should do the hundreds. It's a basic Pilates exercise. It just doesn't, doesn't work for you. It doesn't work for anybody. It's, it's sort of an exercise you shouldn't do, really. Um, and please, if you do not agree with that, if you're a Pilates instructor out there, let's, let's have a discussion. And we can please convince me otherwise. So, and otherwise. Three more times. Three. And up. Two more, one, and lift it up, those legs. And last time, and lift the legs up, and rest. Excellent, very good. Take the ball away, and let's continue on to, did you feel that coordination? Wasn't that kind of cool? You were able to use the arms, and you know, I didn't feel like I was doing this the whole time. Keep that in mind about why you got the hundreds and what happens when you do the hundreds. So, the last thing we're going to do, and you know, there's a lot of this philosophy you shouldn't do extension. That, that's another thing that you and I are going to, if you're an applies instructor out there or an organization that doesn't think you should do extension until you learn, the, until I, when you walk in the door or when you first get me, you are going to do extension. And um, if you're wondering why, Write your question in. Hey, why do you do extension? Well, let's do an extension exercise, another one besides the swimming, the breaststroke, and feel what muscles are working when you do extension. Lift your back up, lift your legs off. Arms are off. 
You're going to circle the arms front to the back. One, to the back. Two, back. So, if you're, the question is, why do we do extension? When we sit, we sit in a posterior, I'm still circling my arms now, so we'll do three more and we'll reverse. Um, when we sit, we sit in the posterior tilt. When you do extension, it opens up that lower back reverse. All right? So when you open up with the lower back, all these muscles are opening up. They're strengthening, of course, but extension really uses the back. So when you sit, you hope that you sit straight up and down. Because we tend to sit in a curvature spine. Three more times. So why not do something in the other way? Right? We up and then relax down. So I'll give you an example. And we're going to do that again anyway. So this is your 30 second rest, by the way. We sit like this. So the question is, why not do exercises that lengthens and strengthens these muscles. So you have to ask that question. You have to ask questions about well, how come you're not working my back? Why aren't we in that extension? Why aren't we moving the other way? My back hurts. These are just common things to think about. I'm not saying if you have a, your back hurts, suddenly do extension. That's a decision. decision. But I have a feeling a lot of us out there feel that lower back kind of stiffness feeling, nothing, you know, kind of like, ouch, when you get up, you feel like, ah, I gotta do that. All right, legs off, arms off, hands off, and the breaststroke again. We go one, to the back, two, eight, three, to the back, eight, four, eight, five, reverse, eight, one. And again, I think that what I like, if you, again, if you don't know me, you'll start to get to know me more. I love conversation. Let me know, hey, you know, uh, Brian, you're just wrong. You should not do extension. Nah, well, I'm going to disagree, but convince me otherwise. I, be, I can be convinced, or I can at least hear a dialogue. Reach your arms behind you, stretch his legs, feel that extension. And my last thing about extension here, while you're in the position, don't come down yet. And this you have to, is I think extension is more important than flexion. Like sit-ups, this right here, this position, holding in this position, is more important than doing sit-ups. Now again, <laughs> I'm probably you were out there thinking, mm, I don't know about that, but um, again, convince me otherwise. Alright, plank position, plank to the plank. We're getting smart today, aren't we? We're going to be smart. We're going to be smart exercise people. Go back. It's all about being smart, isn't it? Plank and plank. You know this is my favorite exercise. Yes. And we go back. Yeah, I guess, you know, I think, and come forward. Asking questions. Having a dialogue about height. Because you, I have, a, you know, you have so many options of exercising. And I am all a fan. Do as much as you can. There's so much out there. So much. You just want to be smart. You want to get the best out of your workout. Because if you're going to spend a uh, half hour, which is today or so, 45 minutes. Number one, if you get classes for me, I talk a lot. But you're still moving. That's the main thing for me. The other thing is... I'm hoping that, you know, that I guide you through how to exercise correctly to get stronger, faster, and efficiently. And number two, well that's number three, two, number three, is that when you go and do another type of exercise, that you've taken that knowledge and you say, okay, I can do this. These are how I will be able to do it. I think we have two more times. And at least you won't fault me that I can't count. <laughs> And forward. The number last thing is I love questions. I love being challenged in everything I do. So and relax down child's pose. And I want that dialogue. So send me some messages, okay? Wow, that was a fast half hour. That was great, wasn't it?
Well, there you are. Thank you very, very, very much. That was fun. That was fun. I want to hear from you guys. Hope you're doing well. We will talk soon. We'll talk soon, guys. Thank you very much. Bye.